As a young obstetrician, I became very interested in, in what these events before birth actually mean. And so after delivering babies, I would look into the baby's face and I would say, where have you been? What happened in there? And what does this mean for the rest of your life? I think some of the mothers thought I was crazy, but, but it had a big impact on me because some babies have clearly been overfed in the uterus. Some have been underfed and are very malnourished. And it seemed absolutely implausible to me that these events didn't mean something important for the rest of your life. I, I knew of the Rain Foundation's interest in the origins of disease in humans, and they liked the idea and they supported it. The RAIN study was the world's first pregnancy intensive cohort study. There had been birth studies where you begin studying people at birth, but this one was based on using ultrasound so we could follow the growth patterns of babies before birth. That had not been possible up until that time. What it means is that we have great data linking life before birth with health and disease and, and lifetime outcomes. The women who we recruited in 1989 to 1991, they then had their babies, that's generation two, they're having babies, that's generation three. This is a multi-generational study. The reason that I was involved in the study and asked to be involved is because we knew that the follow-up of the children would have to happen in a research institute that was not connected with the obstetric hospital. I think what was so uh, interesting about the RAIN cohort was that it was the, the real beginning of an interest in the antenatal and perinatal antecedents of life. So everyone knew about that and sort of thought about it, but really there wasn't a huge amount of good data on what are the antenatal characteristics and what are the perinatal characteristics of a lot of the problems that occurred later in life. It really does shift the focus from waiting until people get sick in their teens or their 20s or their 30s or 40s and say, oh, hang on, something's happening in utero than something that happens later in life. We've got to focus in on that. That's where we're going to get the biggest progress in prevention. That's the value of the RAIN cohort, prevention of major problems throughout life, and also enhancing the positive aspects of the life course. Once the kids were born, they all came together and they became what was known as a DOHAD study, Developmental Origins of Health and Disease, and moved into a life course study, which is what it is now, and we'll continue following this cohort from when they were in the womb to when they were children to now young, young adults until they're older adults. I like to know about my own health. And since I've had my kids, it's been really interesting to find out that a lot of the stuff that the kids are measured against is actually my results from when I was a baby. So I thought that was really cool too. One of the biggest questions in science is whether diseases and, uh, and changes in health are related to the environment or to the family, to hereditariness. And if we've got multiple generations, we can start asking questions about how much of a particular characteristic is heredity and how much is it is nature, which cannot be answered with anything but a longitudinal study like the RAIN study. One of the really special things about the RAIN study is that it's collected information from the participants over these 30 years on all, all aspects of health, physical health, mental health, um, social interactions for people. So we have a very rich source of information to explore, make discoveries about how all these things interact in a complex way to help people be healthy. Even when I was pregnant, it was interesting because I wanted to know the whole aspect of your life. What do you wash the dishes with? How do you clean your house? Detergents that we use. So it's all relevant data to look to the future. We had um, a special ways of engaging with the families. We brought them into the institute. We gave them parties. We had a big celebrations for the 10th birthday of the RAIN cohort and the 20th birthday of the RAIN cohort. But we actually had the kids involved in deciding what research should be done. So it was one of the first times in the institute that we had consumer participation in research methodology. And we lead the world, actually, in having consumer participation in research. To be that small part of a massive group and to think that collectively everyone in that group is actually achieving things for the kids of the future. It's an absolutely amazing feeling. 
So over the last 30 years, we've collected over 30,000 pieces of information on the central um, participants, the ones that are now young adults. Um, we've got um, genetics information on them, which is 30 million bits of information on each individual. And we have over 100,000 biosamples um, from the study as well. So we have bits and pieces that really provide us lots of opportunities to make some exciting discoveries. The RAIN study has a really exciting future. The historical data that we hold on the RAIN study gets more and more valuable. And you really need large numbers with rich data like RAIN the study has got to be able to understand what are the important factors and how these issues develop and how we can prevent them in the future. In Australia and internationally, the RAIN study is known as a really unique resource with a, a density of data which uh, makes it out, stand out from most other studies in the world. The RAIN study has the catch phase which really, to me, sums up the important contributions of all the different people involved in the RAIN study and that's that one of us could change your life. <laughs>